Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson and this is Human Resource Management. We are now on to chapter seven uh, for this week. We have chapter seven and chapter eight. Uh, chapter seven is on retention and motivation, two things that are very important. You must retain your employees and you must motivate your employees. Well, you don't have to retain your employees, you don't have to motivate them, uh, but uh, you won't have a very good workforce if you do not. Uh, learning objectives as always uh, be able to identify the difference between direct and indirect turnover costs so uh, we'll look at some uh, turnover costs and, and talk about turnover and then we'll say you know these are the costs that we can directly say were attributed to this person leaving and these are the costs that maybe they were indirect but they definitely affect the organization uh, number two describe some of the reasons why employees leave right uh, could be conflict with the manager, could be that they just fed up with work, uh, could be some changes with the uh, family, they could have moved, anything. Uh, number three, explain the components of a retention plan. The cost of turnover. So the cost of turnover can range from two, from 20 to 200 percent of the employee's salary. Uh, turnover is defined as the loss of an employee. Now it could be voluntary turnover where the employee leaves or involuntary where we tell them to leave. Uh, involuntary turnover, uh, employee has no choice in termination. Uh, for example, employer initiated uh, due to non-performance. Uh, calculating turnover, you can actually use this formula, separations uh, during the period, right? So let's say four people separated from the company divided by the total number of employees, let's say it's 45 employees, times 100 equals the percent of turnover, right? Uh, you can try it out, use that method, and, you, and you'll see that it definitely works. Uh, and this just shows like the trend in terms of uh, separations so, uh, year over year. So examples of turnover costs. So we'll look at the, some examples and then we'll show you some split examples between indirect and direct. Uh, recruitment of replacements, right? So you have to recruit a replacement uh, for the individual that you lost unless you are uh, not replacing the position and someone is um, uh, absorbing uh, their, their responsibilities. Administrative hiring costs. So you have to go through all the paperwork and red tape. Lost productivity associated with the time between the loss of the employee and the hiring of the replacement, right? So we lose the employee on July 7th, and then we don't hire anybody until August 7th where we lost productivity there. I lost productivity due to the new employee learning the job. So I get the job, but I don't know anything. I have to be trained, and we have lost productivity there as well. Lost productivity associated with coworkers helping the new employee. So I need somebody to help me. I need somebody to show me around. And now, now, now we have some additional lost productivity. Uh, the cost of training, right? So uh, we have to either pay somebody from the outside or take the person from the inside uh, away from other duties that they can be co completed that have or that are value added. Uh, you know, there's there's going to be a cost of training as well. A uh, cost associated with employees' lack of motivation uh, before leaving. So you know what. I've got short timer syndrome. I've already mentally checked out, and uh, I'm not going to, you know, go 100%. I'm just going to coast on out before I leave. Uh, the cost of trade secrets uh, and proprietary information shared by the employee who leaves, right? So you got the secret sauce, uh, the secret recipe for Mrs. Fields, and then you go to a different cookie company, and now I'm trying to use that proprietary information. And then public relations costs, uh, not always the case in every uh, instance, but you know they can be in, in certain ones uh, so these are the cost of turnover so direct recruitment costs advertising costs for the new position orientation and training of new employees severance costs you know so somebody leaves you're gonna pay them out the severance for the years that they've served there testing costs time to do the interview for new replacements and time to recruit and uh, train new hires those are all direct cost of turnover uh, now indirect costs a little bit more hidden uh, but they definitely have an impact uh, you have the loss of knowledge, loss of productivity while new employee is brought up to speed, uh, cost associated with lack of motivation prior to leaving, right? So people sometimes don't think about that. And cost associated with loss of trade secrets. So I'm going to increase this uh, real quick so you can see it, or at least see it a little bit. All right, so these are reasons for employee turnover, and I'll you know scroll down a little bit when we get to right there. Poor and ineffective leadership or management. So uh, management and leadership is not up to par. A person could definitely leave. Conflict with supervisor or manager that'll get you out of the door really quickly. Uh, workload, right? You're putting too much work on me, or maybe it's just not enough, and I, I feel like uh, I need something more stimulating. Job mismatch. I just got I'm in the wrong job. I need to be doing something different. 
perceptions of unfair treatment, right? So I perceive that the treatment of me is unfair. Uh, so I've had someone before that, you know, uh, they came and accused me of, of favoritism. And I said, well, you know, why is that? And the individual said, hey, well, the reason why is because this individual uh, comes in late, they go to breakfast, and then and then they start doing their work, and then the person does this, the person does that. And uh, the thing was that the individual should have, you know, if you were really that concerned, you would have told me uh, before the two of you got in an argument, right? Uh, but, uh, but she perceived that I was treating her unfairly because I let the other one do that. And I said, how would I let the other one do that if, I wasn't I wouldn't even be there right these are individuals that came in really early in the morning so um, I wouldn't know unless someone you know kind of pointed it out to me um, scrolling down uh, or not hold on a second oh there we go uh, looking for more career advancement right so if, you know there's no advancement no career opportunities there then I'm gonna leave and go somewhere else Internal pay equity issues, right? I'm not getting paid what I should get paid. Non-competitive benefits, right? So your benefits and maybe your pay are not relative to the mark. You know, they're not up to par with the market. Personal issues such as health and child care issues. Conflicts with company mission and values, right? So you don't like what they're portraying as a company. Uh, feeling unappreciated. Relocation of partner spouse rights. You know, they've got a better job than you move. Hey, you know, who cares about that job? and low job satisfaction, right? Those are all reasons for employee turnover. Let's get that back down the side. All right, our learning objectives. Uh, to uh, be able to discuss some of the theories on job satisfaction and dissatisfaction, uh, explain the components of a retention plan. Uh, retention plans, we're looking for high performance work systems, a set of systematic practices that create an environment where the employee has greater involvement and responsibility for the success of an organization. If you have greater responsibility and you're tied to the success of the organization, it will definitely make you uh, perform a little bit differently. Uh, and you have to take a strategic approach and we have some videos uh, that are listed indicating uh, you know, some, some facts about taking a strategic approach. So HR's role in creating a high performance work system, um, you know, that, that's what's needed in the business environment. So teamwork and team rewards, uh, employees working, uh, employees work is rewarding, empowerment, empowering individuals to do things. Uh, information sharing is encouraged, right? Don't just say, oh, I'm just going to keep this information because I'm going to, you know, be here forever and uh, I don't want anybody else to learn how to do it. No, uh, you share the information, you learn something new and get bigger, better, stronger. Uh, pay systems are fair and transparent. Uh, training, formal performance feedback, and work processes uh, encourage interaction uh, amongst employees. Um, employee assist in plan change and uh, and back to teamwork and team rewards. So these are all the things HR plays a role in, uh, in, in making sure that you have a high performing work system. So this is the progress, progression of job withdrawal. I'm going to increase this as well. So this is how it works. Employee becomes dissatisfied for any number of reasons discussed earlier in the chapter, right? So any one of those reasons we pick. Behavior. Uh, change. If unionized, increases green grievances, whistleblowing, uh, change of conditions such as applying for other jobs. Uh, physical withdrawal, uh, leave the job, internal transfer, absenteeism, and tardiness. And psychological withdrawal, uh, disengagement in job and or with team members, less organizational commitment, and become less productive, right? So this that's kind of like the path that most people go through when they have uh, job withdrawal. Uh, the Hawthorne study. So this is very interesting. Uh, it's one of those things that you know you may think A is the reason why B happened, uh, but it could actually be C. Uh, you know, C could be the the reason why B happened. Uh, Hawthorne studies conducted in 1927 to 1932, uh, designed to see how physical and environmental factors affected motivation. Uh, they they mess with the lighting and the break times, and the researcher found that the worker uh, improvement occurred no matter which experiments were performed. Right, so they turned the lights up and they performed better. They turned lights down and they performed better, but it was just because they were paying attention to them. Uh, workers were very happy to receive attention. Uh, this was a start of research uh, on motivation at work. 
this is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, and, and there's certain needs that you, you have to have satisfied prior to dealing with any other needs. So you have your uh, physiological needs, uh, food, water, shelter, things of that nature. Uh, safety needs, right? You want to ensure that you know uh, you don't have to uh, sleep with a with a gun in your hand to be safe, right? You want to have safety needs and feel like, hey, uh, you know, I can go home, I can lock my door, I can turn my alarm on, and go to sleep, and things will be okay. Uh, social needs, so the need to interact with others. Uh, some of us don't have as much of a social need. Uh, some of us do. Uh, esteem needs, uh, so, you know, hopefully have a healthy self-esteem and self actualization uh, needs. So these, that's like at the top where you're like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm totally met my goal as a human being here on earth and I'm like, oh, right. You know, that, that, but you know, that's very, very rare. And that's why that's up at the, you know, top of the pyramid. Uh, that's when you're kind of feeling like the flow of everything. Uh, Hertzberg two factor uh, theory. So studies determine which aspects at work cause satisfaction or dissatisfaction uh, resulted in motivation factors and hygiene factors. So two different types. Uh, same thing, but totally different. Uh, so motivation factors, achievement, recognition, the work itself, responsibility, advancement and growth. Hygiene factor. Th see, these are things that if they weren't there, then you would have a problem with it. But since they are there, there's no problem. So if you come into a classroom and their desks there, you sit down and you listen to the lecture of the professor. But if you come in a classroom and there are no desks and everybody's standing there, then you're going to say you really missed the desk and they need to get back here. Uh, so uh, you, you have to understand how, how, how that tends to work. Like you don't walk into a room and say, oh, you know, I'm so thankful and so glad that we have air conditioning. Uh, it, it's not that, but if the air conditioner is out and you're in there burning up and sweating through your clothes, I can guarantee you that you'll be looking for the air conditioner. Uh, so hygiene factors, company policies, supervision, relationship with manager, uh, work condition, salary, and the relationship with peers as well. Uh, McGregor has the X and Y theory. I have a video on that. Watch it. It's really good. Starting point to understanding how management style impacts motivation, right? So uh, uh, theory X manager is like, hey, these individuals don't want to do anything. They're lazy, they're this, they're that. Uh, they have to, you know, be motivated by fear in order to do something. Why theory? They believe people want to be involved. They want to do things. They want to be involved with the organization, help grow the organization. Uh, to me, I say have a little bit of theory X and a little bit of theory Y in you because uh, you often need both. It's not just a cut and dry thing. Um, so, and it's a starting point to understanding how management style impacts motivation. So the carrot and the stick approach. So the stick, right? You ever seen that? The carrot and the stick uh, is used to poke and prod you. Uh, if you don't increase sales by 10%, you will be fired, right? The stick is poking you. Uh, the carrot approach offers a reward. If you increase sales by 10%, you will receive a bonus, right? So uh, which one works better? Well, you know, it depends. Depends on your uh, situation. Depends on your organization. Uh, sources of em uh, employee satisfaction data, so exit interviews, meaning that uh, somebody says, I voluntarily want to leave. This is your date that you're exiting. Sit down with me and tell me what's wrong with my company. Uh, and job descriptive index uh, the, uh, survey, so I have to check that out as well. So another learning objective is explain the strategies and considerations in development of a retention plan. Uh, salaries and benefits, so you have the standard process, paid communication strategy, and paid time off, right? You want to have your paid time off, uh, whether it be vacation, whether it be sick. Uh, you don't want to have to get docked for pay because uh, you have to go to a doctor's appointment. Uh, implementing retention strategies, so training and development allows employees to experience growth. Uh, performance appraisals, formalized process to assess how well an employee is uh, performing. I'm going through those right now. Uh, and can be used as goal setting opportunities and succession planning allows employees to see a path uh, for job growth. Uh, flex time, telecommuting, sabbaticals, uh, right? So flex time, um, you know, uh, telecommuting, things like, uh, you know, hey, I'm, I'm working at my house and I'm permanently working at my house. Uh, and, and that's a that's a great thing, but it, it you do lose visibility within the office. So when you're trying to get promoted, like up to a manager and or above, it's going to kind of be tough. Management training, training managers to be better managers, uh, great thing. Uh, conflict management and fairness. Uh, fairness is a perception, right? Uh, and procedures and uh, consistency is the key. Uh, okay, so job design, job enlargement and empowerment. So designing a more rewarding job, adding duties to help with growth and allowing employees to make decisions, right? So I'm saying, hey, I'm going to combine these two jobs. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to empower you, but I want you to make sure that you make the right decision. 
and then pay for performance strategies. Employees are rewarded for achieving set objectives. Uh, and the work-life balance, ensuring employees have satisfying home and work lives. If they don't have satisfying home and work lives, uh, typically the work life is going to uh, go bye-bye because individuals need to uh, you know, have a different, decent relationship and decent environment within their homes. Uh, other strategies, on-site daycare and daycare assistance, so great. Uh, gym membership or on-site gyms, on-site dry cleaning and drop-off and pickup. Car care, such as oil changes, uh, on-site once a week. Uh, on-site yoga or Zumba classes. Uh, summer Fridays, when all employees uh, work half days on Fridays during the summer. And various group uh, support groups for cancer survivors, uh, weight loss, or uh, caring for aging parents, right? Uh, all, all different things, all different uh, benefits that you could have. I'm sure all of those things, at least for most, the most part of them, uh, are, are things that Google has. Because uh, if you look up the video on the Googleplex, hey, it, it looks great. Uh, they have all of these things and individuals that are the candidates for their position. So that's it for Chapter 7. Uh, make sure that you complete all your work for this week and your quizzes as well. Uh, and always have a good day and a great week.